Hey hey and welcome to my channel. In today's video I want to talk a little bit about what is typical Swedish. From food to items to occasions I wanted to give you a quick list and if you don't live in Sweden I don't think you know any of these. At least I didn't before I moved to Sweden. Let me know down in the comments below how many typical Swedish things you knew before. If you're new to my channel my name is Julie and I'm originally from Germany. I moved to Stockholm just out Outside of Stockholm almost one and a half years ago. I moved from London UK with my British partner and we have two cute little daughters. And I'm talking about life here in Sweden for people who want to move to Sweden and live in Sweden and I share life in Sweden as a foreigner. Let's get started. So the first thing you might not have heard if you don't live in Sweden or if you're not Swedish, is fredagsmus. And basically it means cozy Friday or Friday coziness. And I really like the idea because it means that you kind of come together with your family or maybe with friends on a Friday evening and you kind of wind down a little bit from the working week and you make some food and you watch a film you kind of snuggle up on the sofa and maybe even eat some popcorn i think it's a really great idea the sweets came up with and it's definitely typical swedish something you definitely want to adapt to when moving here and another typical swedish thing is lördags godis and it basically means saturday candy and that's something we definitely have adapted as a family already because i think it's a really cool idea what it means is that instead of eating something sweet every day especially for kids you have this lördags godis which means you tell your kids you can only eat sweets on a Saturday. And when I went to the dentist with my four-year-old daughter, basically this is the first thing they ask me, you know, how many times she eats sweets. And I said to the dentist that I already heard about Lerdax Godis and that we're actually adapting to that because I think it's a good idea. I can basically tell my child, you know, this is the rule here. We have to adapt. We can only eat sweets at the weekend. The idea actually comes from dentists who campaign for just eating sweets at the weekend on Saturday because it's better for the teeth and I think there's also just so much sweets you can eat in one day so it's kind of a good combination but yeah they have uh, this for kids it's only one day a week basically but what I was wondering is that there are so many opportunities here in Sweden to buy sweets. I mentioned that already every supermarket has basically an aisle with lots of goodies, lots of sweets you can pick and mix. And then there are special shops for it as well, pick and mix shops. I know that adults can basically also eat like whenever they want, not only on like a Saturday, but it is quite weird that there are so many shops and so many sweets everywhere, so accessible to be honest. But then there is a the rule of only eating one day a week. It's interesting, maybe it's trying to be disciplined, having the temptation in front of you, but resisting and really sticking to the rule. I don't know, <laughs> it could be, right? Another very typical Swedish drink is gluck. And now is the perfect season. We are coming up to Christmas. And around that season, when it's also colder outside, you can have gluck. If you have not heard of it before, it's similar to mold wine. And usually it's alcoholic, but you can also buy it non-alcoholic. You can buy it and bring it home, or you can find it at Christmas markets, for example. I did post a picture of my gluck I recently bought and realized there are differences, some good and bad ones. So apparently <laughs> I just uh, got a bad one, or let's say there are better ones out there, but you can try a few and uh, just decide which one is the best. I definitely will do that. And I have mentioned this a few times in my videos because it's probably maybe the most typical Swedish thing, but it is fika. And it basically means like a coffee break. You have that in companies or you can also have that at home. I definitely didn't know about that before I moved here. Maybe my Swedish friend in London told me about it. But yeah, you meet up with a friend or with friends and have a fika, you drink some coffee and have like something sweet or some pastry or something like that. And the next one is also a typical Swedish drink. It's called Yulmust or Paskmust. Påskmust. 
You guys, I am learning Swedish and I'm trying to pronounce everything correctly. So hopefully that was correct. So I tried Yulmost for the first time last year, so almost a year ago now. And I was quite surprised. I thought it was like Coca-Cola, like a fizzy drink, a fizzy sugary drink. But it doesn't taste as sugary. Maybe there's as much sugar in there, but it is not that sweet. So it was actually a pleasant surprise that it was quite yummy. I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of fizzy drinks or Coca-Cola or anything like that. So I'm not sure if I will get into it, but I wouldn't mind, you know, especially visiting friends or so to have a glass of Yulmust. And I was also wondering if Yulmust and Poskmust are different or if it's kind of the same taste. And when I did a little research, it did say it's kind of the same thing, but it might taste a little bit different because the environment is different. You know, you have Yulmus in the winter, it's cold, but Pask Musk is in spring. I forgot to say, you drink it at Easter, so it is a little bit warmer. You know, the smell is maybe different outside. So that does make a difference when you drink certain things, even if it's the same drink. At least that's what I read. Something typical Swedish is another food and it's Kalles Kaviar. And I have to say, this is one of my favorites. I shouldn't mention it because I want to do another video about all the Swedish foods, maybe Christmas related, but I have to say it here because it's typical Swedish. And I also really like it. It's so nice, salty. I think that <laughs> is what really hooks me. And I also like fish. So it's a great combination. Something also very interesting, maybe typical Swedish, is that Swedes like to have food in tubes. So there's the caviars in a tube and you can like spread it on your bread. And there's cheese and other things in tubes. Like they have shelves full of tubes, which is very interesting. I guess it's a bit about convenience. And maybe in those tubes, it also lasts a little bit longer. That's my assumption. But... I think it's also quite typical Swedish. Well, and then there is also something very typical Swedish and I read into it a little bit and was quite surprised. It is about snooze. So I don't know if you have heard about snooze. It's like tobacco you can put into your mouth and you have it between your lips and your gums. And instead of smoking a cigarette, you can have snooze. And yeah, it seems also to be a bit stronger. And when I was reading about it a little bit, I realized that it's actually forbidden in every other EU country and it's only allowed in Sweden. I found that a little bit shocking. I mean, I'm a non-smoker, so smoking cigarettes or tobacco in general, I'm against it. So obviously I am maybe a little bit shocked because I think it shouldn't be allowed. But then I guess also alcohol shouldn't be allowed. And I do like to drink some wine every now and then. So yeah, what do you think about snooze? Let me know down in the comments below. Typical Swedish is also system polaget. I think I have mentioned it in one of my videos before, but that is something I definitely didn't know before I moved here to Sweden. Alcohol consumption is quite regulated or let's say the selling of alcohol is quite regulated. So System Polaget is actually a shop where you can buy all the alcohol and that's the only shop you will find in Sweden. You can't just go to the supermarket and buy higher alcohol, I have to say. You can buy some alcohol non-alcohol and alcohol up until 3.5% in supermarkets. But anything higher, you go to a system polaget. And then the alcohol is a little bit more expensive. So you don't buy that much or drink that much. And also the opening times are quite regulated. So you have normal opening times from Monday till Friday and then also Saturday and Sunday is closed. And if you didn't go to system polaget to get your alcohol, there is nowhere you can go. So if you have a spontaneous party or you are invited to a party and you have nothing at home, no alcohol at home, then you can't bring any alcohol. You cannot buy it anywhere. So that's quite interesting. A very unique system, I find. I think I'm at the age where I really don't mind uh, because I don't drink that much alcohol. And I guess as a young person, you should probably not drink that much either. So it's good for them. <laughs> But yeah, you definitely have to be more organized. And at the end, also don't drink that much alcohol and you will be happy. So here are a few items which are typical Swedish. We have the butter knife, smörkniv. 
I'm trying hard. Then we have the cheese slicer, Osthüvel, and the shoehorn, Skohorn. The latter, I have to say, is actually maybe not super crazy typical Swedish because I know it from Germany, but I have seen some Americans talking about it and finding it like, you know, what is this thing? <laughs> and I, if you don't know it, it's basically, yeah, a shoehorn. So you can get into shoes easier. So again, it's about convenience. All these items have to do with convenience, I feel. So Swedish inventions, or let's say Scandinavian inventions, because I know that some of you said that maybe some items come from Norway, but the item is still very typical Swedish. I didn't know these items exist except the shoehorn, the other two, the butter knife and the cheese slicer, I discovered here and I'm using them more and more regular. Okay, the next one, I feel to 99.9% .9 you probably know this. It's Ikea or better Ikea. And it is very typical Swedish and I had to mention it because I feel Ikea also symbolizes a little bit how Swedes are or what they stand for. You know, it's about convenience, so practicality, building things together in a very easy way. Then there's the design part. So Swedes really care about design. Maybe not everyone, but I feel like there is a Scandinavian design, which is very popular and very well known in the world. And there's also the child friendliness amongst it. When you go to Ikea, you know, you find all the menus for the kids and then all the amenities for the kids. And you even have a little play kind of room for kids. You can leave your kids there as well. Like, I feel that's also something sweets always think about, about their kids. And you know, sweets do it so well that this is really an international thing. So obviously IKEA exists worldwide. Typically everyone knows about it and typically everyone has at least one item from Ikea. If it is not furniture, it could be anything else you use at home. So yeah, Ikea is typical Swedish. Last but not least, I wanted to mention take a number systems here in Sweden. That's something I only realized like lately, wherever I go, if I go to the doctor or if I go to the pharmacy, if I go to the post office, there are these take a number machines. So where you take a number and then you wait for your turn. I think again, that's very Swedish, very practical. Swedes also like to queue, you know, and that's a very systematic way to do. So everything has its order. So it's not chaotic. I think that's also a little bit Swedish. They like to have things very neat, very organized. Okay, these were 11 examples, if I'm not mistaken, about what's very typical Swedish. If you know anything else, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I hope I will see you in my next video. Until then, have a great day and stay safe. Hey, doll.